Hi guys, um, I'm Tracy Trapta and I lead the strategic initiatives for the PC group in um, HP, so PSG, on a worldwide level. And this is Su Chin Pak. Hi. Su Chin Pak uh, works for Viacom MTV and yeah. I think today we're going to talk a little bit about one of our key programs uh, that we have been running this year to connect with the NetGen. And um, HP and MTV actually have a three year history of partnering to, to develop programs that work, for, that work to connect with the NetGen and build a little bit more brand relevancy for HP there. We know that they're wildly influential and we know that there's no better brand to partner with than MTV to help build and shift the perceptions of HP with that audience. And I think that today we're going to tell you, take you through a little bit of the background behind the program which is called Engine Room. Um, Engine Room went live this year, well, excuse me, in 08. And we're working on some extensions for 09, but we kind of want to give you a feel for what the program is, um, what what we created with it, the kind of engagement, and um, uh, I guess the, the connection that we achieved with the target audience through the program, and um, where it's going from here. So while we're talking, stop us if you have any questions or want to get a little bit more information. But I want to run a video for you. Go get it. We have toiled to bring you something special. A pilot for an animated series for ages 6 to 12 about time travel. We have this website. We have to scan you as a user search for the cat. We feel like our baby. <laughs> so, the way that all came about was to connect with the NetGen. We collaborated with MTV and we, we recognized this sort of circle that they are really engaged and invested in creating their own digital content and that HP is very much an enabler of that content, but the brand perception is that maybe there are others that are better at it. Um, and we also recognize a circle of creating, sharing, and celebrating content. And we thought if we can tap into that with our brand and with MTV, we can then um, you know, connect our brand and build more relevancy around it with that audience. So um, I'll let Suchin talk a little bit about how we went about uh, casting and doing some of the mechanics of the program, then we can talk about some of the specifics. Yeah, um, you know, I, I always joke that it was like the biggest little show that I ever worked on. Um, you know, they pitch it to me in a conference room, they're like, yeah, we're doing something and some kids are going to fly here, we're going to do some challenges, it sort of sounded like Project Runway, but kind of smarter, and I was like, sure. And then I walk in and there's like 45 cameras and like a whole studio built in. Kids are floating in from Australia and China and Japan and um, Brazil. Um, uh, you know, and it was just like uh, the most amazing experience. You know, um, it started out with a global casting call um, and we got submissions from all over the world. And then from there we narrowed it down to 16 kids and we broke it down by country, um, sort of region. So there was a Latin American team, uh, an Asian team, um, a European team, and then a North American team. Um, and then every week they would uh, engage in these challenges. Um, and, you know, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, where we'd have like things that should probably take any um, normal company months uh, to make. You know, we gave them a day. Well, that's, the, yeah. first <laughs> the first challenge, the, yeah. the little clip was not in order. Um, but the first challenge was introduce your teams to the world by creating a hand spot. I work on the hand spots for yeah. HP and they take us months, months <laughs> and months. Yeah. And we gave the, the kids each, I think, teams of four, three, four teams of four, yeah. they had just met each other. Yeah. We gave them three Language days. barriers, cultural yeah. barriers, We gave them lag. three days yeah. to create. And it, uh, the site aired in some countries, it aired around the globe, the program did online. In some countries it was on air, but mtv.com or mtvengineroom.com is the website if you want to go watch the episodes and see how those kids, all, all yeah. four teams of them, rose to the occasion and used that loft that was totally decked out with HP gear from our yeah. workstations to our Blackbird gaming machines where they yeah. blew off a lot of steam and our handhelds and um, they really got into it. They loved the gear. It was better than what they used at home to create. Yeah. And um, I yeah. think that that's a lot of what helped them kind of deliver. And their spots, their, their hand spots that they created are pretty amazing. No, they're, I mean, you know, you don't know what to expect. You know, you get these kids' portfolios, and we've been 
pouring through submissions and I had my own opinion <coughs> about who should be in that room and you know they're super professional you know these animated spots these hand spots the stop motion um, films the short films that we did uh, we did as you saw a tattoo challenge which was the most difficult challenge um, you would think that that would be the easiest challenge but it was the most difficult challenge and um, you know it's it's short of you know hiring them right off of the show and putting them in you know fantastic you know um, positions of you know creative sort of opportunities so um, it was great and we shot it over a period of uh, I, I don't remember it was six two, weeks six weeks, it was six weeks. so we, we did the global casting call um, we uh, collected uh, submissions for about four weeks yeah. and the blogs were going crazy because everyone was so yeah. interested they wanted to know and they were commenting on each other's work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of money at yeah. stake. Um, so they were going crazy kind of debating and talking about who should win. Then um, when we selected those 16 kids from around the globe, we went, yeah. flew them to New York and filmed for six weeks. Yeah. And then um, we aired the programs one week at a time, you know, throughout the course of, I think it was a the last week of August um, through September and the first week of October. And every week when we aired the programs, we also posted up how-to videos on how to do the cool stuff that those experts in the engine room are doing so that the kids at home who are watching it could also figure it out and then, you know, we made recommendations on the kind of gear and the software and the sorts of things that they should think about if they wanted to create stop motion or do, do the things that we did in the challenges. Um, and the portfolios, you should talk yeah. about that on our website. We um, had a place where we had everybody, anyone could upload their portfolios, their digital portfolios. So um, whether you're a fan of the show or whether you're a creator yourself or, you know, maybe looking for some fantastic young, you know, talent, um, it's, it's, like, it's like this amazing space where kids can actually put up their portfolios and show their work and um, create real opportunities for themselves. So. So it's taken we, on a life of its own. It yeah. has, for sure. I, I mentioned earlier the whole enable, create, and share, and, and uh, kind of celebrate cycle. That's exactly what we were doing. But throughout the program, we were also highlighting the HP gear that was perfect for yeah. doing a certain, a certain task and, and um, how HP is enabling their creativity. Yeah. And um, it, it was great fun. I, the, the winning team, because now it's public knowledge and has been announced, um, so as I mentioned, six challenges. Uh, the final challenge was that director, what was Kevin Smith? Smith. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Smith. And the cha that challenge was uh, two words, time travel. No other direction. So yeah. those crazy kids, you know, they had to go off and create, what did they have? They, two I mean, three they, days? Yeah, two, yeah, two, three, no, three days, yeah, to create something around um, time travel. And they were short films and, yeah. All sorts of things. The awesome. European team, and you can go online and see it, but the European team created a film, a website, a video game, yeah. and a, yeah. an animated series. Yeah. So they were pitching their work like to MTV. Yeah, <laughs> straight like Nickelodeon yeah, could have bought it. Like, yeah. But um, so Latin America won, and they were ecstatic and off the hook. Every week when when the teams won, they got to take over that big screen on 44 and a half in yeah. downtown Times Square, um, and, and program it themselves. But Suchin mentioned we were at the same time inviting the world to upload their portfolios yes. so that it wasn't a passive kind of program where, where the rest of the world was just watching the 16 kids. It was also where we were every week inviting people to upload and uh, compete for their own set of HP gear so they could be kind of, you know, have the same setup that the kids on the show did. Um, so we had the six challenges. It was fabulous. And uh, we decided to kind of uh, do, flip, flip the script a little bit for the seventh challenge, which was now we're opening it up to the world at large and th for a notebook design contest. So we invited the world to upload their designs for the notebook design contest. And what you see here um, was a notebook design that is the winning design from the program we did in 08 with MTV. And it's super, I mean, this, this uh, kid was from Portugal. And his design won, and it's sort of a, a, I'll call it a popularity contest, because the, the audience gets to design it, and the audience votes on it, and then HP creates it. And we created about 100,000 of these. Um, and of course, you know, we created bags, and the countries went crazy with the merchandising in um, Thailand. I, I forget where. They had a, they had a, a crazy uh, tattoo party where kids were signing up. I don't know why we keep, we gravitate toward tattoos, but they were signing up to have <laughs> a design tattoo that was 
it's ridiculous, but the passion and the excitement that we've tapped into in this realm is pretty amazing. So we decided that for our seventh challenge, because this has been so successful from a product perspective, but from a, um, from a, okay, thank you, from a, uh, from a, just the youth engagement perspective, it's been wildly successful. So for the seventh challenge, we would kind of take this and revamp it a little bit. And for OA, challenge number seven in the engine room, we, we um, did the program, uh, it was about designing the notebook, but it took it a step further because we're also letting them, um, we're calling it design by democracy, they're creating the bundles, they're telling us what accessories do they want with it, do, how do they want it packaged, you know, okay, green packaging, you know, our thoughts are like this, and they're giving us input, and we've made a commitment to go build it, uh, not the specs, because we know that everybody wants them you know, the fastest, biggest, but that's not necessarily affordable. But they're creating the, uh, or they're designing the image that goes on it, what software packages, what do they want, what are they going to use, what accessories, and what does it look like. So, the, uh, and this, this product, um, we just unveiled the, or announced the winning yeah, uh, design this morning. And I'll share with you some of the designs, the uh, finalists from the regions, and then I'll show you the, uh, the final, what, what it will look like. But this is, this is a mock-up because the product will come out in back to school 09. So it'll be on shelf around the globe in late June, early January. So um, uh, this is a finalist design from the North America team, or not team, but okay. from North America. Again, these were selected by, designed by peers, voted on by peers, so sort of popularity contest. This is the finalist from Asia, and I don't have their names here, but can, I've got them, I'll, I'll share with you if anybody wants them. This was the uh, finalist from Latin America. It's funny too because, you know, breaking them up uh, by region, every region definitely has their own yeah, flair. Style. Yeah, and you, I just didn't think that, you know, it's like, oh, that's definitely from the Asian team or that's yeah. definitely from the Latin American team. So. And this is the finalist from Europe. And the winning design uh, came from Japan. And the notebook, uh, Will look something like this. This is the winning design. Um, uh, this is not the notebook, but it's <coughs> it will look like. And again, we're doing the same thing with the, um, or as I mentioned earlier, we're working with the kids also to select the packaging and the software and the image and all the accessories that come with it. So it's absolutely yeah. designed by democracy, designed by the NetGen for the NetGen. And that was, um, and she's from uh, Japan. She's a woman from Japan. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to stop and see if you guys have any questions or comments or thoughts. Good. Um, is there uh, the notebook that was on last year was mm -hmm. is that a 14 inch screen? I think like the, the one on the left there. That's DB 2000. DB 2000. So is it is it going to be roughly the same size of notebook or the same class of notebook? But well, we're not commenting on the form factor today because okay. we're not a, it's it's but it's going to be. Equally It'll just look like that. <laughs> That's right. It's th today we're talking about the competition and the engine room program and connecting with the kids. So, but the design will be that. We're happy to talk about anything else you guys want to talk about. <laughs> so, how long did it take to build that suite? Was that a warehouse that they turned over to me and basically half of it was a studio and half of it was a no, the, 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 whole, the whole thing was the studio. It was a huge loft um, in Dumbo in Brooklyn. And they, I mean, it was a matter of weeks. It was an empty loft. And then before you knew what there was like lighting. And the, I mean, not to mention the amount of technology that was in there that they had to. And then when we pushed record, we're like, please. <laughs> you know, we, all the wires. And, um, and they, and then. They went back to a hotel and um, sort of slept and ate and lived there, and that we didn't film. Um, one, so it's just inside the. One of the cool stories when we when we announced the sixteen winners and then we found the loft, we posted a picture of the loft on the website, and we didn't say where it was or anything. But the kids who were you know on the blog and on the site and really anxious to, they were just so engaged and invested in it. Actually, within what was it? Within two hours of posting the, yeah. the picture up, 
they um, noticed out the window of the picture. But they figured that, out exactly. Yeah, what it that it was the Brooklyn Bridge, and and one of the guys posted on the blog. Oh, I, blog! I know exactly where it is. It's in Dumbo. Da da da. And they had they had totally pinpointed it. Oh, it's and it, yeah. It was someone from Asia who had done that. But it's just, I mean, I think time and time again, the experiences with the, this audience and these kids are just teaching us so much about how insanely brilliant they are and how smart they are and how. Um, I think it behooves us to work with them instead of market to them, and that's part of what we're trying to do with this program. And it also shows, too, how empty that space is, you know, I mean, we all know that, that young people are online, we get it, we get it, there's the third screen, we understand that, probably the most important screen. Um, but trying to figure out how to bounce between the television screen and the computer screen is still a formula that if anyone has the answer to that, then we'd all be running um, the network. But. Um, but there's just such an empty space where young people are connecting with the technology they're using, the community abroad, and then really sort of opportunities to kind of showcase their talent and hopefully monetize it and profit from it. But, um, you know, at one point during the blog, it was like getting 2,000 comments. Like, it was insane, this, this blog that I was running. And I just posted this picture up we had of this empty lost space. And they were figuring out exactly a map was and pinpointing on Google Maps where it was. And then they were putting up photos of themselves in it, and it started this whole chain reaction of then other people, and by the, then we were like, all right, screw it, we'll do a contest. So then we did this contest of, you know, <coughs> rendering this photo and putting yourself in it, and this whole thing just kind of, the show was a fantastic, almost a byproduct of this call that we had put out to these young people um, to <laughs> unleash their creativity. And they did that, and they did that, and then the show was a byproduct of that. For me, it was really about, it started as soon as that, the website, the blog, it was just a blog, you know, like yeah. a simple WordPress thing. And, and then they were making movie scripts and films and short films, and it was just like, it was insane, and it was all over YouTube, and people were, I mean, it was like, I would log on, and I mean, I, I would keep refreshing, and I'm like, 1,500 comments? Like, does this even, you know, it was, it was, um, like I said, I mean, we had this idea, and nobody knew really. Yeah. You know, we'd never done it before, so none of us had ever really done anything like that before, and it um, it was just hugely successful. I think for MTV Online and MTV, certainly you for know, HP. Yeah, and we did the pre and post, which we always do. Yeah. And what 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 impacts were there to the brand perceptions for HP, and was the program a good fit? And did you even take away anything yeah. about HP <laughs> gear enabling, you know, enabling creativity? And the answers were all. Yes, absolutely. One other thing I wanted to mention. So, so challenge number seven was designing the notebook. Challenge number eight, we haven't announced it yet, but um, we are working on it for 09. But what we're thinking is that it's going to be going right back out to those kids, inviting them to create the marketing programs for the notebook. So it's kind of full circle. You created the notebook, the image on it, the, the accessories with it, and now tell us what do you think is the most creative way to market it. And, um, so we're, we're really thrilled with the program and we'll continue it on and so what you'll see throughout the course of 09 are, you know, challenge number 9, 10, 11, and 12. And we'll keep it going and I mean it'll morph and evolve and we'll do some course corrections but that's the point of it. Do you think you actually move this even more to the consumer market? Like it looks like you have Nike hands or ID shoes, maybe you have a design studio in a small retail outlet that you can design your own. Almost like you scan brands with it on there but you design your own laptops to keep it on the line. Possibility for sure. That sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I think they've been, been very successful. And I think if you think about the computer's personal game, which is the platform for, for PSG, and just helping people understand just how very personal that thing is that you're working on, that's a perfect, it kind of brings it to life. Yeah, we're even choosing from some of the designs we're making the skins available from the, the entries. And some of those entries are just amazing. You're right. And, and actually, I didn't mention that, but you can go on. In fact, since we announced it today, you can go online today and um, go work. Um, there's a button to buy the skins for them if you wanted to kind of stickerize it. We, um, we're not doing it quite, quite, you know, order. It's not customized for the actual plastic yet, but maybe someday.